Hello friends, in this video we study about Laurentian climate which is also called as cool temperate eastern marine climate or cool temperate eastern margin climate. This type of climate is included under cold snow forest climates under Köppen scheme of climatic classification. It is represented by capital letter D. There are two important types, one is the Laurentian type and the other one is taiga type under cold snow forest climates. The first one is represented by alphabets D and F where D stands for cold snow forest climates and F stands for wet type of climates where there is no distinct dry season. Even if there exists a dr distinct dry season, it is of very short duration. And the winters here are severe. When we consider other type that is the taiga type or subarctic type of climate, here the winters are dry and they are much severe compared to the Laurentian type or humid continental type of climatic conditions. The Laurentian type is an example for intermediate type of climatic region between the British type of climate and the taiga type of climatic region. The British type indicates a moderate type of climatic region whereas the taiga type indicates an extreme type of climatic region. In the taiga type we have extreme winters and in the British type we have summers which are moderate and winters can be win winters can have extreme levels of cold conditions. And if you look at the Laurentian type, it is of intermediate type where summers are compared very 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 warm whereas winters are much cooler than the British type of climatic conditions and less severe than the taiga type of climatic conditions. It includes features of both maritime as well as continental climates. When we say maritime, it is greatly influenced by oceanic, oceanic conditions especially in the summer months whereas in the winter months they are affected due to continentiality. So continentiality is nothing but greater distance from the oceans. So we can see these regions appear to be very close to the oceans but when it comes to the wind systems we have westerlies in this particular climatic region and westerlies are westerlies blow as offshore winds. As a result we consider this particular area as greatly influenced by continentiality. It is true with both the Laurentian climate which is present in the northeast American region as well as parts of Asiatic region. So both these regions have are under the influence of continentiality. And this particular type of climate is absent in southern hemisphere. This is mainly because of absence of significant significant landform in the temperate re region beyond 40 degrees north and south of north and north of south of the equator. So we have Antarctic which comes in the polar or thunder type of climatic region. So it cannot be considered as a climatic region which can have a Laurentian type of climate. But what this region we have in this particular latitudes should have come under the Laurentian type of climatic influences but still here the landform is quite narrow as a result it is influenced by rain shadow effect of ends rather than the continentiality of the long continents. So here we have Patagonian desert which is affected by aridity rather than continentiality. And moreover as the regions are very narrow the oceanic influence is very profound. As a result the Laurentian type of climatic conditions doesn't exist in the southern hemisphere. Coming to climatic conditions here the temperature or temperature range annual temperature range is quite significant because of cold winters and hot summers. In summers the temperature can be as high as 20 to 25 degrees celsius whereas in winters it can go below freezing. As a result the annual range is quite significant. And in winters the landforms can be affected by frost and snowfall is quite common. And summers are very warm, warm as in the tropics. Coming to precipitation we know that this type of climate is represented by D and F where F stands for wet type of climatic region. So this particular climatic region receives rainfall throughout the year and there are quite regional variations based on whether the climatic condition exists in the North East American region or the Asiatic region. The most important feature is the summer maximum uh, rainfall where the rainfall occurs mostly in summer months and winters have rainfall but they are quite low compared to the quantum of rainfall is quite low compared to the summer months and average annual precipitation is about 75 to 150 centimeters and it is well distributed throughout the year as a result it aids natural vegetation and dry westerlies in winter but westerlies are not totally dry they bring some amount of rainfall or precipitation in the form of frontal cyclones 
we know that this particular belt is affected by westerlies and westerlies are the ones which flow from in this particular direction and they carry some amount of moisture and they shed so much a lot of moisture in the western region and as they move towards the east they are totally moistureless but in the north east american region we have great lakes great lakes which supply good amount of moisture to the westerlies as a result westerlies bring significant uh, comparatively good amount of rainfall in the this particular region where we have the laurentian type of climate so this particular part of canada is called as canadian canadian shield or laurentian plateau hence the name laurentian type of climatic region and we have asiatic region it is also influenced it is also affected by continentality that is offshore trade winds in the form of westerlies this occurs especially in the winters uh, the summer months have different type of climatic conditions so we have offshore trade winds as a result winters don't have good amount of rainfall and also there are other factors which reduce rainfall in the winter months and most of the rainfall year occurs due to the broken pressure cells we know that in the northern as well as southern hemisphere in the higher latitudes the pressure belts are not a continuous belts but they are broken into distinct uh, high and low pressure cells so we can see here there are distinct high and low low pressure cells so this particular region is affected mainly due to the wind which is flowing from the high pressure cell you know that at the high pressure cell winds descend and this descending winds flow towards laurentian type of climatic region in this direction as a result they carry good amount of moisture from the oceans and this moisture is dropped in the form of rain in the summer months this is true both in asiatic as well as north american region whereas in winter we see we know that the northern north american region receives rainfall in the form of westerly winds which carry temperate or frontal cyclones most of the precipitation occurs as snow especially in the form of frontal precipitation and this rainfall is quite low compared to the rainfall that occurs in the summer months when it comes to asiatic region the manchuria and eastern siberian region receives good amount of rainfall in the summer because of the high uh, wind coming from the high pressure cells and in the winter months due to continent continentality the winters remain more or less dry when it comes to japan which also comes under this particular climate has rainfall both in winters as well as summers the winter rainfall occurs in the form of north west monsoons where we have high pressure belt in the siberian region and winds subside here and flow towards the japan so the moisture is carried from the japanese sea towards the japanese islands as a result we have i mean the japan sea rainfall both in winter as well as summer in summer the rainfall occurs in the form of southeast monsoons that is winds flowing from southeast towards north west in january months we know that it is winter in the northern hemisphere in but in january months the region is affected by frontal or temperate cyclones it is true in in case of both china as well as parts of northeastern america but here due to great lakes region this particular region receives good amount of rainfall in winter whereas the landmass is quite far away from the oceanic influence as a result the amount of moisture carried is low and hence the winter rainfall is quite negligible especially in the manchuria region of china and eastern siberia so here the climatic conditions are highly influenced by the presence of ocean currents we know that here we have warm gulf stream which flows as north atlantic drift towards the region of norway etc and here there are various cold currents like the labrador current and greenland current which come and get mixed with the warm gulf uh, stream in this particular region which is called as grand banks which is a part of newfoundland island of canada so this particular region is under the influence of convergence of oceanic currents which re uh, leads to mixing of cold and warm waters it is also called as upwelling and hence here this particular mixing leads to foggy conditions due to temperature inversion and these foggy conditions brings good amount of drizzle to the island of newfound land so this is about the climatic condition of the laurentian type of climatic region in the north east american region and the gulf stream which is a warm current increases the moisture level we know that warm currents are warm and evaporation is significant and so when the winds are blowing in this particular direction from the high pressure cell especially the the high pressure cell is called as azores high 
from there these winds blow towards the laurentian climatic regions and this particular winds carry significant of moisture because of the warm gulf stream and coming to the asiatic conditions here again we have winds flowing from the high pressure cells especially in the summer months so here monsoons are called as south east monsoons during summer and this particular monsoon bring good amount of rainfall to both the japanese islands as well as parts of manchuria shakalin islands and eastern siberia of russia and we know that there are different names for islands in the japanese island groups the top one is called as hokkaido and then honshu and kaishu shikoku all these parts are a different island groups of japan the most important one is hokkaido which is greatly affected by this particular climatic condition and also the also we have the cold ocean currents which cold and warm ocean currents which are converging near this particular island here we have oyashio current or kamachatka current which is coming from the kamachatka peninsula so this particular landform is called as kamachatka peninsula and we have shakalin islands from there we have cold okhots current and this particular current mixes with the warm kurushino current so this particular convergence zone again creates foggy kind of weather which is an example for temperature inversion so this kind of foggy weather also affects the region like it affects in the region of great grand banks hence this particular region is called as second second new found land of earth and here the rainfall regime resembles tropical monsoon type we we have we know that in the tropical monsoon type winds are reversed based on seasons likewise here also the winds in the summer months are southeast winds whereas in the no in the winter months winds usually flow as northwest monsoon winds as a result it indicates a typical monsoon type of climatic condition so japan and this particular region is called as second new found land mainly because of the influence of cold and warm currents which are mixing in this particular region and we have talked about the particular monsoon winds so if you look at the climatic graphs we can say how the winter months are very cold and the summer months are very warm and this gives rise to a very high annual temperature range and the taiga type of climatic conditions are the ones which have the maximum annual temperature range and the second position is taken by laurentian type of climate where the annual climatic i mean annual mean annual temperature range is quite high it is true in chicago which is a part of laurentian type of climatic condition in the north east american region and we have pongyang which is the capital of north korea so both these type of regions say see similar type of climatic conditions coming to natural vegetation here we have both conifers as well as deciduous trees conifers exists above 50 degrees north latitude especially above uh, great lakes region whereas the regions beyond uh, below great lakes see deciduous forests we know that deciduous forests are the ones which shed their leaves in extreme climatic conditions here the deciduous trees shed their leaves in the winter months because of severe cold there are various climatic features which aid the growth of natural vegetation for example year round rainfall and the rainfall quantum of rainfall is also significant it is about 75 to 150 cm and it is the climate here is very wet or damp because of oceanic influence and also foggy kind of weathers and all these factors aid the growth of natural vegetation and we know that forests tend, uh, tend to be conifers above 50 degrees north latitude and they tend to be deciduous in the uh, to the south of 50 degrees north latitude and the taiga belt which is a part of central and northern canada and part of northern siberia and this particular taiga belt extends till the laurentian type of climatic region lumbering is a very significant economic activity especially because of the various advantages the lumbering industry has in this particular region here the trees occurs in pure stands which aids commercial exploitation on a large scale along with that the uh, the undergrowth is less dense and this is quite important when it comes to establishing transportation facilities along with that there are less number of species and hence the same kind of trees can be cut and sent for the same purpose as a result the lumbering industry here is quite significant along with that we have both conifers as well as deciduous trees conifers supply softwood whereas deciduous trees supply hardwood so here both we can find both hardwood as well as softwood forest resources 
Coming to economic development, lumbering industry we have seen is a very important industry and from here we have paper and pulp products which are exported to the rest of the world, especially Canada is very important when it comes to uh, the production of paper and pulp. It exports one of the finest news prints to the world and we know that the Great Lakes region and the St. Lawrence waterway which is present here greatly helps the export of uh, timber materials. And here the agriculture is less significant mainly because of severe winters. So severe and long winters discourage agricultural activities and most of the region depends on dairy farming and most importantly fishing for various economic income. And also this particular region called as Annapolis Valley which is a part of Nova Scotia. We know that Nova Scotia is known for highest tidal ranges and here the apples are very famous. The region is famous for apples and most of the apples are exported to the tropical regions. So fishing is the most important economic activity in both Asiatic as well as Northeast American Laurentian climatic regions. We know that, that Grand Banks are a quite extensive continental, continental shelves and continental shelves give a lot of advantage to fish, fishing industry because in the continental shelves the nutrients doesn't sink deep as the continental shelf itself are not so deep as a result the nutrients re, uh, remain more or less near very close to the surface along with that we know that here there is convergence of various cold and warm currents and cold and convergence of cold and warm currents give rise to upwelling of nutrient rich cold water when there is upwelling of nutrient rich cold water it aids the growth of phytoplankton which greatly depend on these nutrients as well as sunlight. So both nutrients and sunlight will be available at the surface and the foggy weather also enables good uh, favorable climatic conditions for the fishing industry. So both nutrients as well as climate help the quick growth of phytoplankton and the phytoplankton becomes good feed for fishes and hence fishes of all, si all sizes thrive in this particular region of Grand Banks. And hence it is this big, this region because of ocean currents as well as the favorable weather conditions make it one of the richest fishing grounds on earth. And most of the fishing is carried out by mechanized trawlers and the ports here are indented that is the coastline is indented as a result the ports here are of natural types. So natural port construction is very easy compared to the coast uh, ports in the construction of ports in the regions where there is co uh, straight coastlines. Usually indented coastlines aid in the construction of natural ports whereas the straight coastlines doesn't aid the construction of ports. So here we have indented coastline as a result ports are easy to uh, construct and this particular post can be used for all the kind of fishing fish processing activities like cleaning cutting and packing. So everything is done at the ports and is exported to the rest of the world. And here this region has a great, ad great added advantage in the form of St. Lawrence waterway. So we have Great Lakes region which are well connected to the Atlantic Ocean in the form of St. Lawrence waterway. So again we have fresh, uh, fresh water fishes which are available in the Great Lakes region and also we have the ocean, ocean fish resources. So they can be transported easily towards the interiors as well as towards the other parts of the world. So Japan we know that it is called as second Newfoundland because of the similar climatic conditions. Here also fishing industry is very significant and especially Japan is totally dependent on dependent on fishing industry for its survival and Japan is known for its whaling activities which is nothing but the catching of whales. It can it reaches up to regions of Arctic and Antarctic circles for its whaling activities and it is hugely criticized for its killing of whales. Other important one is the seaweed cultivation which is also an important source of income as well as food for the Japanese people. So if you look why fishing is so important in the Japan, we have various factors which influence fishing industry in Japan. We have Japan which is mainly a forest land, about 50% of the land is covered by forests and only 80% of the land is classified as non-agricultural. Sorry, sorry more than 80% of the land is classified as non-agricultural that is about only 20% can be utilized for agricultural activities and hence it has to depend on various other sources for both revenue as well as food resources. And this is one compelling reason along with that Japan is not well endowed with 
natural resources and hence the primary sector is very weak especially in the mineral resources sector as a result it has to look for other alternate revenue generating sources and one added advantage is the geography in the form of mixing of cold and warm currents which provides favorable fishing grounds so it it has exploited its weaknesses I mean it has turned its weaknesses into strengths by exploiting the favorable conditions and there is scarcity of meat especially because of the absence of land and pastures there is no significant dairying industry and there is great demand for fish in the neighboring regions which are less developed so japan has very highly technical and well advanced fishing industry so its trawlers are highly mechanized so it can uh, catch fish from far away regions as well as from its own islandic island regions and it can export to the international market which is quite uh, rampant especially in the southeast asian countries advanced fin advanced financial services and good government policy encouraging government policy along with that skilled workforce where the workforce has experience or experienced since decades so all these factors along with the geographical advantage in the form of indented coastline so indented coastline provides for good fishing ports along with that we have mixing of cold and warm currents so all these factors aid in the fishing industry of japan so this is all about laurentian type of climate thanks for watching